Thank you so much for the invitation. Um, and thank you for having me here. Uh, my name is Natalia Benedis. And very recently I've developed and released my very first iPad application. Um, currently I'm working on an iOS game on an Android project. And I'm also involved in a PC project. And um, I realized that this may sound either very far out or not very relevant, but you see, the thing is that, um, like Piotr said, exactly a year ago, uh, so this time last year, um, actually, I knew nothing about programming or about object oriented programming or about methods or functions or properties and I was completely oblivious to all of that and I want to share with you a story of how I got from there to here and my point being this is all really simple all it takes is just one good decision and a lot of persistence okay, so let's go back in time to the late 1980s. Uh, this is me, aged five, with my dad, who's just bought me my first computer. This was a Commodore A64. And I, I loved it to bits. I was so enchanted by that machine. I had like hundreds of tapes and I played thousands of games all through my childhood. And actually, I loved that computer so much that I um, looked at the manual one day and it had instructions on to write very basic programs in basic. So I, I actually wrote a program in basic when I was five and this is what it looked like. Uh, the very first line printed the word dupa which I thought was super funny and the next line just went back to the first one so that it would repeat continuously and this is the actual output. <laughs> and I was, yeah. I was so excited and so proud of myself that I just ran to my mum and said, Mum, look at this. And she was not so impressed. Um, then I wrote some other things like showing a balloon on the screen, just a simple sprite bouncing off the walls. But then I thought, nah. Um, I'd better go back to gaming. Um, so a few years passed, uh, then my dad got me a PC. This is me aged um, 12, it's 1996. Uh, this is me teaching my cousins how to play games on a PC, uh, which they probably never seen before, and I was also super happy about it. Um, so I, I was already a very hardcore gamer by this time. Um, some more years passed. This is me aged uh, 14, 15 ish, going through my goth emo <laughs> whatever stage. I don't know. <laughs> uh, this is probably Windows 98 or something. And I was still playing games and I loved it. Um, but then um, I passed my A levels and it was the time to pick up um, a path in education. So I had to choose a university course. Um, however, at the time, I really got into poetry because I was a romantic soul. So I devoted years and years on studying poetry at the Aguilone University, and I got my a master's degree in postmodern American poetry. And I, I was really proud of myself, and I really loved it, and I played games all the way through university too. Um, so then the year 2012 came and I really didn't quite know what to do with myself. Um, I was just playing games, this time on consoles, all through the night. And one night my, my boyfriend who's here came up to me and said, you know, I think you'd, you'd be a, you, you, should, you should really find something that you love and just, and just do it. Uh, you should find your passion, you know, and he said, I think you'd be a really good programmer. I think you do have the mindset for this. I think you should try and learn how to code. I really have a hunch that this will work. 
And then I came up with millions of excuses. I thought, no way, I'm, I'm too old for this. My brain is rotting away. This needs like five years of sitting through uh, lectures at computer science courses at university and volumes of books and decades of experience. No way I'm ever going to learn any of that. Um, however, I thought, well, I like games so much, so maybe I should just give it a shot, so maybe I could write my own game sometime. And I did give it a shot uh, last year, in April, uh, during the Rails Girls workshop hosted here in Krakow. Uh, by the way, the next session is happening this very weekend, so this story has the potential to repeat itself many times. Um, and during this workshop, I met like-minded girls who just love technology and computers and games and knew next to nothing about programming, just like me. And we did some really cool stuff and we actually created an app in a day. I thought that was crazy at the time. And I also met some terrific um, coaches and developers there. And I asked them how they became uh, programmers, and they told me their stories. And there was this one guy, um, he's here, you know who you are, uh, who told me about this Objective C thing. And um, he was really ecstatic to share this with me. And he said, There's this book you should read, and you should just go out and buy it and just start learning. And there's this iTunes University course that you should take because I've taken it and I'm a developer right now. And um, he showed me some Apple documentation uh, that he found useful. And you know what? I just felt so inspired that I just went out and just bought the book. Uh, so I opened it and um, I was quite pleased because it was directed at complete starters and beginners with no prior programming experience at all. And then I actually uh, just delved into the language and I was just immediately drawn into this vortex of those, you know, square, hardcore brackets. Not so many wobbly parentheses, which I didn't like. Um, those asterisks, you know, I fired up Xcode and I saw these colours. And I thought, you know, like, this is proper poetry. You know, this is a mystical, ancient language that I just to learn, it's just so cool. And, and so I did, and I, I got quite far into the book, and I was pleased with myself, and then I thought maybe I should get into animation and games, because that's what I've always wanted to do. So I, um, I got interested in Coco Studio, which is a framework for uh, games and animations over Objective-C, and um, I thought, well, if I want to develop my first application that's, that's very graphical, I need an image. An image of something cool and something cute and something fun that wouldn't bore me. <coughs> so I came up with this little guy. <laughs> I just drew him really fast and uh, called him Mr. Broccoli. And I thought, okay, I'm just going to do stuff to you and... <laughs> <laughs> and, and you'll be showing up on my iPad and doing the stuff I tell you to do, and that was that was super fun. And by the end of the evening, I managed to do this. So this is Mr. Broccoli just going in random directions. When you touched him, he actually like rotated, and he did this little wee squeal uh, that I just recorded myself, and I was super proud of this. And my boyfriend came home, and he was, he was truly ecstatic about it. He thought this, this was really fun, and he said, you really have something here. So I was ecstatic myself too. And I thought, okay, so once I've got the random movement and sound sorted, let's try something else. So I thought, well, okay, let's leave Mr. Broccoli alone. Um, I need like, something to teach me how to retain and release objects. So I thought about corn and how it would throw its little corn kernels around. <laughs> I did just that. And this is how I learned about, you know, memory management and stuff. 
Um, then I played around with the physics engine, and I thought, okay, let's just try having some peas just bouncing around. I also played around with the accelerometer and stuff. And around this time, I thought, I really might have something here, and this is, this is so cute and so cool that I really want to share it. And I just gathered all of these vegetables in a bundle, and I thought that, you know, whatever the outcome, I would totally release it on the App Store. Um, however, I thought, well, these, these guys are really funky, and this is a very peculiar sense of humour. So I thought about my, my target audience, and then it dawned on me that actually, um, kids might find it fun, uh, because kids don't really like vegetables, so why don't I make this, turn, turn it into a, an interactive book uh, for kids, where they could play with the vegetables and find them funky, just, just like I did, and, and learn all about them. Um, so then I just kept on, you know, spawning new vegetables on, on each on each home page. And this is Mrs. Carrot just washing herself underneath flowing water of the sink. Uh, this is where I learned all about animation and particle generators and sprite maps. Um, and actually, um, all of the graphics, uh, all of it was, was done by myself uh, with this tablet and a pen. And I also, well, let alone programming, but I didn't know how to draw stuff. So, um, I had this really pretentious book lying on my desk called Mastering the Art of Painting, and I would look up um, pages with still life and try to draw like, vegetables in the same fashion as uh, French masters. <laughs> but, you know, um, this actually took 90% of the time, and 10% of the time was spent on actual coding. And you know what? <laughs> I'm not ever doing that again. I just, I just can't, can't really paint. So um, I'll leave that to the French masters, and I'll just um, focus on, on other things. Um, anyway, apart from graphics, I also decided to uh, add some cool sound effects and some narration. And since my boyfriend has a really terrific voice, um, I'm with him. And he recorded uh, the narration into a wardrobe so that his voice wouldn't bounce off walls. And it was like this. So this is him um, narrating, um, narrating the text into the wardrobe, and actually what we did is uh, we bought a huge bottle of wine and we thought each vegetable needs a poem to go with it, so that kids would, would find it, uh, you know, find it cool. Uh, and we, we drank the wine and we wrote the poems about vegetables, each of them having rhymes, and we had like super fun. Um, so by this time, the, by this time, uh, most of the application is actually done. And this is what it looked like. Uh, that's Mr. Potato. Um, there's a masked uh, snow generator in the window. And you can move around the potato and it goes like, om nom 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 nom, and you move it. <laughs> and it, it, was, it was just gorgeous. And I, I, was, I was super proud of myself. And um, every vegetable had a coloring page because I decided to add a coloring book to it. And then when you finished the entire book, there was a quiz about vegetables that checked your knowledge of whether you've learned what each vegetable was named. Um, and that was it. And um, I did put it off for quite a long time because I was quite bashful about it. I mean, I was happy, but I thought, well, uh, there are so many cool apps out there. I mean, well, come on, what is this? But anyway, I did release this uh, by the end of last year. And I was completely shocked um, that on the very first day it climbed all the way up uh, to the second place uh, of the books category in the App Store. I mean, come on, who are these people buying this? <laughs> this I mean, this was just a, a simple, modest app. 
and I had no idea that people would actually want to, want to get it. And uh, the best thing is that they actually loved it. Um, so I had straight five star reviews. Um, I got some anonymous media reviews. And by anonymous, I mean I had not done any marketing or any PR at all. And I don't know who these people are, but I guess there are some proud parents who found their kids loving my application. Uh, but so, so I wish I'd known about what Yana said earlier. <laughs> um, I just I got two online interviews, and actually I won the um, I won an award uh, this year for the best iOS app in the um, education category because apparently some kids managed to learn the names of vegetables. <laughs> and um, is it the best app in the world? No. Is it innovative or game changing or disruptive? No. But uh, the thing is that I really put my, all my heart and soul into it and um, I think that kids really can really see that uh, in an app when all your heart's in it and the passion really transpires through it. Um, now the best thing about all of this is the tweets that I received. Uh, so uh, some parents started taking photos of their kids uh, playing with the vegetables and, and tweeting them to me and I, I found that completely stunning, you know, that you can just think of something, uh, devise an app um, and, you know, type it in, code it with your fingers and, and draw it and just put it out there and make someone happy and make someone smile. I think that's the best thing that that can happen to anyone, and that's really such, a, such a rewarding experience. Um, this is probably my favorite tweet. Um, uh, this is a guy whose uh, two-year-old son, uh, he told me uh, he's just managed to learn almost all of the vegetables, almost, and um, that his son has learned how to launch my app and that every time he gets his iPad back, he finds that my app is launched in the background because his son keeps playing it in secret. <laughs> Come on! This, this is just so disarming. I mean, this is... My, my heart just melted when I saw this. And I really think that throughout your entire uh, learning process and your creative process, that such appreciation is really the best payback can ever get um, because your motivation is now no longer just intrinsic um, but actually other people start motivating you because you, you, you can make their day and, and I think that that's really the strongest drive, the strongest motivation that you could ever possibly get. Um, now, however, now for the sad news. Uh, there are some skills and some requirements that you have to have before you even start thinking about learning how to program. And, well, they're not very easy, but I do hope that some of you will be able to start coding because you fulfill these requirements. Um, so the first one is having a head. Uh, <laughs> preferably one with the ability to think that's not severed. Uh, the other one is access to a computer, preferably with internet access. And the third one is really hard to call because uh, to be a programmer you really need to know your maths. And by that I mean you should know how to add, how to subtract, and how to multiply. You need to know your multiplication tables and how to divide. Um, now, uh, my, my point here is that uh, like I said at the very beginning, this is all super simple. All it takes is just one strong resolution and a lot of determination. I mean, you'll be grinding and you'll be hitting your head against the wall, but then something will dawn upon you and you'll just know even more. And um, 
You don't really have to write any complex algorithms, leave that to the lunatics, honestly. Uh, you don't need to, you don't even need to write an application. You don't even need to write a web app if you don't want to. Uh, the thing is that I strongly believe that uh, the ability to code and to program is just as essential as reading or swimming or riding a bike and that totally anyone, every single one of you here uh, could totally do it if you just put your mind to it. So, um, where do you begin? Uh, these are some, some websites that I've used. Uh, Code.org is a great starting point if you don't know anything about anything. Uh, Web Muses is obligatory to follow if you're in Krakow. Uh, this is a great community for women, but not only. Um, on Coursera you'll find some extensive courses taught by formidable personalities. In many languages they have really cool Python courses, by the way. You could learn how to build a search engine in Python from scratch on Udacity. Um, Udemy hosts some paid courses, but they do have a free one uh, on Java for complete beginners. This is taught by a very handsome Englishman with a gorgeous northern accent, so I do recommend that. Uh, on, on YouTube, there's this super great channel called The New Boston. This is a self-learner who uh, hosts tutorials in many different languages, including Objective-C. And he's also really funny, he always names his classes after fish, and he writes these really perverted apps, like on dating and calling girls uh, during the tutorials. So that's also, <laughs> so that's also very funny. Um, anyway, this is all I wanted to say, and uh, I just want you to start today, and not to come up with any excuses to start learning how to code tomorrow, because Tomorrow, come to think of it, you could be richer by everything that you've learned today. The day after tomorrow, you could be twice as smart. So, you know, coding can really make you um, a more intelligent and a more aware person. Um, and it can really teach you to uh, make fast, intelligent and informed decisions. And, like I said, this is absolutely essential. Uh, so, thank you very much for having me. Happy birthday.